So now I'm going to show you Thai ingredients, the backbone of Thai cuisines. First and foremost is garlic. We use garlic a lot in many dishes, stir fries, curry paste, and also shallots. Shallots in Thai is smaller, but if you cannot find it, you can use big shallots like this, but you just have to think about in terms of this is like equal to the three small shallots. And next, we have this white peppers. We In Thai, traditionally, we don't use black peppers. And we use this in order to make food spicy. And also a very important ingredient in Thai marinade. Probably you heard about Three Amigos. And in Thai, it's basically garlic, white peppers, and coriander roots. If you cannot find coriander roots, you can use stems. And now we move on to spice, chili peppers. Thai people are addicted to it. You know, we like food to be spicy. And there are all kinds of peppers in Thailand. And, and you can find, you know, it's available outside Thailand. This one is called Thai bird chilies. And it's quite spicy when you buy a package. You make sure that you get some red color because it's good for colors. You can use for decorations. And if you buy a package, if you cannot use all of it, throw it in the freezer. You can use it, you know, in a frozen form. And uh, these little guys here are called mouse drops peppers. It's very spicy, very aromatic, but I don't think you can find it you know, outside Thailand. Anyway, and when you make green curries, this is what you use. You use green peppers and you can combine the chili, very spicy chilies with not so spicy, just depending upon how spicy you would like your curry paste to be. And that's green curry. For red curry, we use dry chilies. Before you use this, you need to soak this, otherwise you cannot pound it. It will not work. And the same thing, we will combine two kinds of peppers. One is not too spicy. And in Thailand, we call this prickti fa, but it's hard to find, but I substitute with guajillo. Uh, peppers, which is fine. And this one is a very spicy Thai chilies. So when you make curries, you combine these two to get the right, you know, spiciness. If you want it not so spicy, put, use a lot more big peppers. And spicy, you use little peppers. So now we move on to aromatics. Uh, lemongrass, everybody know this, is widely available. And uh, when you buy lemongrass, find the one that is uh, nice and not wrinkle. And when you use lemongrass, you use only the white part. You don't use the, the green part. And you need to smash it first to release the aroma before when you want to put in your soup. And you can eat it when you peel the all the way inside to uh, and cut very really thinly. And that could be edible. You put it in, in the salad. Next one is galangal. If you have chicken galangal soup, this is it. You know, it has very distinct flavor, different from ginger. It ha is very spicy, peppery, and some kind of mustardy. And when you buy it, go buy it at the Asian grocery stores because it has a lot of turnover. And you look at, you know, it's shiny and not wrinkled. Uh, and when you get, you know, get a chance to, to buy this, you don't use all of it. You can cut it up and then put them in the freezer. And it can last you for many months when you just take it out when you need it. And uh, this little guy here is called turmeric roots. Now it's available in health store because it's claimed that it has great health benefit. You use this in yellow curry, right? But if you cannot find this, the dry form is absolutely acceptable. And also this dry form here, the galangal here, and then uh, Lemongrass here you can use. The one from Cook Tour is very fresh because if you buy it from the grocery stores, it might dry for a year or two years before it gets to you. So this is a good substitute. And then this is mak root, you know, or it's also called kefir lime. And when you want to use it, you have to remove the ribs because you don't eat it. It's very, you know, hard. And in Penang, you need to chiffonite it very thinly because you're going to eat it. And when it's young leaves, as you can see, it's, it's light, light, lighter green and you can eat it. But when it's old, it's very dark green, it's very chewy. You don't eat it, you use only for flavoring. And also, this is a 
dry form that you can use. And if you get to buy a package of mukroot leaves, you can certainly keep in, you know, put in a plastic bag and keep in the freezers and you can use it when you want. That's the aromatic that you use, you know, in curries, in soup, tom yam, tom kha. And now we're gonna move to herbs. So everybody know this one. So this cilantro or coriander, Thai people use it a lot, you know, as garnish as well as side dish. You know, there's a lot of uh, Thai snacks that you eat cilantro together with the snacks. In Thai, this is called Pak Thi Farang, which is Western coriander. And I think it's not indigenous to Thai. So we have, you know, this, uh, we use this in, if you had lab, we put this in lab. Also uh, in the Tom Yam, you know, it's very, very aromatic, it's very good. And also some pho place, you know, Vietnamese pho will use that, this one. And then we move on to Ho Ra Pa, which is basil. And you use it a lot, right? In stir fry, also, you know, spicy, and also in curries. And uh, also, this is a dry form here, if you cannot find, but I think you have a lot, you know, this one, I will not freeze it. I would prefer to use, you know, dry form if you cannot find fresh. You have probably very famous dish called grab pao, right? And actually it's made with this herb. It's called holy basil. But this herb is very perishable. You know, if you buy it, you have to use it within a day or two. Otherwise it will get gray. Few Asian grocery stores will carry it because it doesn't last long. You buy it for a few days, it turns gray on you. But if you cannot find the fresh one, you still can enjoy grapao. What you do is combine this, you know, uh, basil with this powder. This is a powder, it's a holy basil powder. So you have this, put that in your, your you know, grapao, and then put these leaves on top in order to make aromatic. I think it works very well. I use it all the time when I cannot find this. So these are all the aromatics and herbs that we use in Thai cooking.